Okay, I'd like to talk to you today about a question. Was Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, sinful and separated from God? Uh, for many years I have heard that Jesus Christ was separated from the Father when he was on the cross, that they were relationally separated, uh, not only from the Calvinist camp, uh, but even from some of my own favorite theologians have held to this notion that Jesus was separated from God on the cross. So uh, after studying this question for many years and examining what does the Bible really say, I'd like to just present some of my thoughts to you today for your consideration. Uh, this teaching is broken up into two parts. First of all, was Jesus Christ sinful when he was on the cross? Second of all, was Jesus Christ relationally separated from God? when he was on the cross. Now the two go hand in hand. Obviously if Jesus was sinful on the cross, he would have been separated from God on the cross. Uh, the whole idea of separation presupposes a uh, sinfulness of Jesus on the cross. Uh, it might sound somewhat blasphemous for even asking the question, was Jesus sinful when he was on the cross? Uh, but people have actually taught this. For example, Martin Luther. Uh, Martin Luther said this, he said, if you will deny him, talking about Jesus, if you deny him to be a sinner and accursed, then you should deny also that he was crucified and dead. Uh, Luther also said, uh, but if, if, if it not be absurd to confess and to believe that Christ was crucified between two thieves, then it's not absurd to say that he was accursed and of all sinners the greatest. In other words, he's saying uh, Jesus on the cross was the greatest of sinners. Luther also said in his commentary on the Galatians 3.13, he said, God, our most merciful Father, sent his only Son into the world and laid upon him all of the sins of the people, saying, Be thou Peter, the denier, Paul, the persecutor, blasphemer, and cruel oppressor, David, the adulterer, the sinner which did eat the fruit in the paradise, and the thief who hung on the cross. And briefly, be thou the person who has committed the sins of all people. See, therefore, that thou pay and satisfy for them. In other words, uh, Jesus became an adulterer when he was on the cross. Jesus became a blasphemer when he was on the cross. Jesus became uh, all of these things, all of the sinners that he died for. He became all of those things on the cross, according to Luther. Uh, R.C. Sproul said this, uh, The incarnate Christ, who enjoyed intimate personal fellowship with the Father, such as no man had ever enjoyed, was suddenly and completely cut off. Once the sin of man was imputed to him, he became virtually incar incarnation of evil. So Jesus became the incarnation of evil. According to R.C. Sproul, he went on to say, The load he carried was repugnant to the Father. God is too holy to even look on iniquity. God the Father turned his back upon the Son. So now, uh, R.C. Sproul is saying Jesus became the incarnation of evil. And because of that, the Father uh, turned his face away because God cannot look upon sin. I would say this, according to the Bible, in my examination of, of the text, uh, Jesus Christ was not sinful on the cross. Uh, according to Leviticus 22.20, it says that the offering needs to be uh, without blemish. And if it's without blemish, then it's acceptable unto God. Uh, also, uh, Exodus 12.5 says the lamb must be without blemish. 1 Peter 1.19 says that Jesus Christ was the lamb without blemish. Well, if he was without blemish, he was without sin. If he was offered to God without blemish, then he was not sinful in his uh, character at all. Uh, Hebrews 9.14 says that Jesus Christ was offered without spot to God. So during the atonement, when Christ was offering himself to God, he was without spot. Uh, 1 Peter 3.18 says Jesus suffered the just for the unjust. So the moral condition of Christ when he was suffering and dying 
was not that of being unjust. It was that of being just. Uh, Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He always was sinless. He never became anything uh, other than sinless. He did not become sinful. Jesus was always sinless. Uh, Luke 23, 41, uh, the thief on the cross admits that Jesus did not deserve what he was receiving. Well, if Jesus was sinful, then Jesus certainly did deserve what he was receiving, and he deserved even far worse. If our demerit was transferred to his account, then he deserved everything that he got. Uh, but the thief on the cross admitted this man had done nothing wrong. He did not deserve what he was uh, suffering. First Peter 2, uh, 22 to 23 says uh, he was not, that Christ was not sinning when he was on the cross. Uh, when Jesus hung on the cross and God looked upon the Son, he would have seen a spotless uh, lamb without blemish. He wouldn't have seen Christ as a sinful, wicked man. Uh, he saw him as a spotless lamb being led to the slaughter. Now, to bear our sin does not mean Jesus became guilty of our sin. To bear our sin does not mean that the moral character of Christ was changed. To bear our sin simply means that he died on behalf of our sin. He was suffering on account of our sin, on behalf of our sin. So Jesus died for our sin, but Jesus did not become guilty of our sin. Uh, the Bible says, he who knew no sin became a sin offering for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21. According to Adam Clark, that means he was made a sin offering. He who knew no sin became a sin offering. It doesn't mean he who knew no sin became sinful or he who knew no sin became a sinner because then he wouldn't be qualified to make an atonement. But according to Adam Clark, uh, it says in the Greek, in the original language, uh, it, it, it simply means a sin offering. That's how it's translated, that same type of phraseology in Leviticus when it talks about a sin offering. Jesus was a sinless offering, not a sinful offering. He did not become guilty of our sin on the cross. He was a spotless sacrifice. Uh, Albert Barnes said this. Albert Barnes said, Jesus was not sinful or a sinner in any sense. He did not so take human guilt upon him that the words sinful and sinner could be with any propriety be applied to him. They are applied to him uh, any, they are not applied to him in any way in the Bible, but there is a language is un, undeviating. It is that in all senses he was holy and undefiled. And yet language is often used on this subject, which is horrible and only a little short of blasphemy. If uh, as if he was guilty, and as if uh, he was even the greatest sinner in the universe. I have heard language used which sent a chill of horror to my heart, and language may be found in the writings of those who hold the doctrine of imputation in the strictest sense, which is only a little short of blasphemy. That was Albert Barnes. So was Jesus separated from God on the cross uh, because of sinfulness or because of guilt? I would say no. The idea that he was separated relationally presupposes a sinfulness in his character. Uh, there's a hymn that says, the father turned his face away. But I've never read that in the Bible. The father turned his face away. That's a hymn, not the Bible. Many people get their theology from the hymns instead of from the Bible. Uh, remember that R.C. Sproul quote? R.C. Sproul said, because God on the cross became the incarnation of evil. Therefore, God the Father could not look upon uh, God the Son. Uh, the whole idea of a s relational separation presupposes a change in the moral character of Christ. Uh, usually, they'll use uh, Habakkuk 1.14 that says God cannot look upon sin uh, because he's of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. Uh, but what about Proverbs 15.3 that says the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Uh, even if Jesus became sinful, God still would have looked upon him. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. When the Bible says the eyes of uh, God is of purer eyes to behold uh, iniquity, it's trying to make a point. And the point is not that God's not omniscient. He is omniscient. He sees everything. The point is that God is holy and sin is disgusting to him. 
uh, it's, it's almost like an anthropomorphism, uh, describing what a man would do if we see something horrific, uh, we wouldn't look at it. It's an anthropomorphism applied to God. It doesn't mean he's not omniscient. It doesn't mean God's not beholding the evil and the good, because he is beholding the evil and the good, according to Proverbs 15, 3. Uh, how about this? Study, the, study Psalms 22, 1 that Jesus was quoting. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? See, the forsakement that Jesus endured from the Father was not a relational separation. It was a provisional abandonment. It means the Father was not delivering him uh, like he had when men tried to stone him. It means the Father was not going to rescue him and protect him like he previously was. To be forsaken, according to the Psalms 22.1, means that the Father's not helping you. So, uh, Jesus was not delivered from the cross. Jesus was delivered to the cross. The Bible says God uh, delivered him into the hands of wicked men. Uh, but in previous times, they tried to stone him, and the Father delivered him from them. So yes, Jesus was forsaken. He was provisionally abandoned. His pr God's protection was uplifted, but he was not relationally separated. Albert Barnes, quoting on Psalms 22, said this, uh, Why hast thou forsaken me? And, uh, why hast thou abandoned me, or left me to myself, to suffer unaided and alone? As applicable to the Savior, this refers to those dreadful moments on the cross when, forsaken by people, he seemed also to be forsaken by God himself. He didn't, God did not interpose to rescue him, but left him to bear those dreadful agonies alone. He bore the burden of the world's atonement by himself. So yes, Jesus was forsaken by God, not relationally uh, separated, but provisionally uh, abandoned, not rescued, not protected. Um, and Jesus did not become sinful on the cross, uh, Jesus died for our sin. He didn't become guilty of our sin, but he suffered and died uh, on behalf of our sins. So uh, I hope that clarifies some issues. Jesus was the spotless lamb of God who died on behalf of our sins, and the Father delivered him into the hands of wicked men instead of delivering him from them. And because of the atonement, we can all be saved. So I hope that clarifies any problems that you might have had in your mind of uh, regarding the moral character of Christ on the cross or the relationship between the Father and the Son during the cross. God bless you.